Friday's top stories from Reuters breaking views. Could Eurozone banking union have prevented Monty's mess? And a ticket to ride up London Shard costs how much? Breaking Views assistant editor Robert Cole is here to chat with us this morning. Hi. Happy Friday. Thank um, you. Of course, we're talking about Monty de Paschi, not Mario Monty here. Um, well, yeah, no, it's an important distinction to make, although they're both involved in they, this story. They indeed are. Uh, tell us what the story is. This is the world's oldest bank uh, and mired in scandal. Yeah, and potentially. I, I, I think we'd be here till the middle of the afternoon to express uh, and to explain every last detail. But very briefly, here is a story which uh, sort of began as a, a sort of an accounting difficulty uh, deep in the weeds of, uh, of, of the backwoods, if you like, of uh, uh, finance and uh, banking industry sort of gossip, if you like. It's gradually and now quite quickly uh, bubbling up into what could be uh, turning into a first grade scandal uh, involving a lot of um, uh, Italian politicians um, as well, of course. But the point we made, we're, we're making today is that we think, well, you know, surely this new banking union's meant to kind of uh, put a stop to all this kind of thing. Now, wouldn't have put a stop to this particular episode because, of course, it's in the, in the past. But we're sort of saying, well, actually, you know what? Not quite sure that the new brand spanking regulatory system would put a stop to or to halt these kind of things either. So that's a little bit troubling. Well, it's not. I mean, if banking union were to stop these kind of scandals and uh, losses at banks, we would have done it a long time ago. Well, that's true. But also, you know, um, I think that any regulatory sort of system should be uh, trying to improve itself uh, bit by bit by bit, uh, slowly by slow, uh, more and more. But um, uh, it's 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 not really going. It's 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 not really uh, reasonable to expect that it would have done anything isn't, this time. Although it should be a better system. Well, let's hope so. But isn't the issue here derivatives trade? I mean, they're they're hugely complex. The fact is that the banking executives themselves, dare I say, some of the regulators just do not understand them. I, I, we I have think, to put cuts I think on you're them. Abs- I think you're absolutely right, Jamie. I think that that's the issue. And because of the deeply complicated uh, and deeply arcane way in which whatever is precisely happened here did happen, it is very difficult to see anybody, really apart from the people who are perpetrators, if you like, understanding what's going on. It seems that two things were quite a long way, uh, way apart, which wouldn't necessarily be linked by uh, or two events qu- quite a long way apart, not necessarily linked by anybody, but they were together. And it was very difficult to see how that would spot. The other thing uh, to bear in mind, of course, is this banking union regulator is only going to be regulated the very largest 200 uh, European banks, and I think, 6, out, and, of them. and there are 6,000. Now, Monte de Paschi, I think, would have been in that top tier, but still plenty of room further down Indeed. for, for, <laughs> for uh, things to get through. Well, from very complex uh, trades and numbers on one hand to quite simple numbers on another, I think even I can get my head around this one <laughs> $40 uh, or £25 to go up the Shard, which is uh, the new building in London, the tallest building in Europe. Um, it's quite steep, isn't it? Uh, it the well, place and the building. Uh, it, it, very steep is, is our analysis. And yeah, we're having a little bit of fun. This building is going to be open uh, to the public. I think it's as of the beginning of February. It's had some uh, visitors up there already, uh, uh, of course. Um, but uh, yeah, $40, I think that that's way ahead of any sort of equivalent uh, cost of uh, the Empire State Building or the Eiffel Tower. We've done a little analysis mm-hmm. of seven or eight sort of, uh, of peers. Uh, but it's also um, not only more expensive in, if you like, t- price of a ticket, but sort of, if you like, uh, price per uh, a metre of elevation. Is, it's even more expensive. And, um, yeah, a bit of fun there. Uh, but I just don't... What's the reason for this? I mean, what, I think what I, to charge forty dollars or, well, or to go up to the top? Well, well, well to go up to the top, you I get a nice view. You get a nice view, fine. But you know, it, we're a sort of family day out. That cost me one hundred and fifty quid. You know, to a go. Man to, of your means, Robert. I, even of a man of my means, that would be too expensive. So why is this happening? It, it may be a sign. I think that you know, it may be just a sign that the shard people have got, just got it wrong, frankly. But it may be a sign that there is a flood of money into the to the London property market. And um, perhaps, you know, if you want a sign of when, uh, when the, the, the puff is coming out of that bubble, maybe when these shard prices are come back coming to down. earth. Well, of course, uh, only an hour ago we had UK GDP contracted in Q4, so maybe the shard builders were a bit optimistic. Well, I think that that's it, but I do like it. I love the building. It's very nice indeed. Robert, thanks very much and have a great weekend. That's Reuters Breaking Views. Robert Cole, and for more agenda setting financial insight, watch our US Breaking Views show every day, 12.30 Eastern, 17.30 GMT. I'm Jamie McGeever, this is Reuters.